In the dawn of the 20th century, dating was a far cry from what we know today. This was an era where courtship reigned supreme, a time when romance was not the driving force behind choosing a partner. Instead, compatibility, economic stability, and societal approval took center stage. In the early 1900s, dating was not a casual affair. It was a serious process, a dance of decorum and propriety aimed at finding a suitable match for marriage. Young men and women didn't meet at cafes for a cup of coffee or at a movie theater for a Friday night flick. No, courtship was a far more formal affair. The man, often with his parents' approval, would visit the woman's home, where they would interact under the watchful eyes of her family. This was not a time for private whispers or stolen kisses. It was a time for conversation, for getting to know one another's character, aspirations, and of course social standing. Societal norms and expectations played a significant role in this process. A man was expected to be a provider, a pillar of strength and stability. He would need to demonstrate his ability to support a family, to uphold the societal norms of the time. On the other hand, a woman was expected to be a nurturing soul, a homemaker, a mother. Her worth was often tied to her domestic skills and her ability to bear and raise children. And yet within these constraints, there were moments of tenderness, of genuine connection. Couples would exchange letters, share music and take long chaperoned walks. Through these interactions, they would build a bond, a partnership that was meant to stand the test of time. Indeed, dating in the early 1900s was a formal affair, governed by societal expectations and strict decorum. It was a time when courtship was not about fleeting passions or momentary desires. Instead, it was a journey, a conscious choice to build a life together, a commitment to a shared future. As we moved into the 1920s, the landscape of dating began to shift dramatically. The era, later known as the Roaring Twenties, was a time of significant societal change. The women's suffrage movement had just won a major victory with the ratification of the 19th Amendment, granting women the right to vote. This newfound political power was a catalyst for social change, and women began to assert their independence in various aspects of life, including dating. The flapper movement was another significant influencer of the dating scene. These young modern women with their bobbed hair and short skirts defied societal norms and embraced a lifestyle of freedom and fun. They smoked, they drank, they danced, and they dated. Casual dating became a norm, a stark contrast to the formal courtship traditions of the previous decade. This shift toward casual dating wasn't just about having fun, though. It was a rebellion against the societal and community pressures that had previously dictated the rules of dating. The flappers and their male counterparts were pushing back against these constraints, asserting their right to choose their own partners and dictate their own love lives. But it wasn't all smooth sailing. This new way of dating brought its own pressures. The concept of dating for fun was a radical one, and it wasn't universally accepted. There were societal pressures to conform to traditional dating norms, and there was a certain level of scrutiny and judgment from those who didn't understand or accept this new way of dating. Yet, the youth of the Roaring Twenties were undeterred. They continued to push the boundaries to redefine what dating could be. They paved the way for the dating norms we see today, where individuals have the freedom to date whoever they want, however they want, Without the constraints of rigid societal norms, the Roaring Twenties indeed brought about a revolution in dating, paving the way for modern dating. Post-World War II, dating took on a new meaning as young men and women sought to settle down and start families. This era brought about a significant shift in the dating landscape, as couples started to buck the tradition of formal courtship and instead adopted a more casual approach to romance. Enter the concept of going steady. This phrase began to echo in the hallways of high schools across America, symbolizing a relationship status that was a step below engagement, but a notch above casual dating. Young men would gift their sweetheart a letterman jacket or class ring as a token of their commitment, a practice that was both charming and indicative of the changing times. But let's not forget the societal pressures that came with this era. The war was over, the economy was booming, and there was a palpable sense of urgency to rebuild and repopulate. Young men returning from war were expected to find a good job, marry a nice girl, and start a family. The American dream was not just a concept, it was an expectation. Young women, on the other hand, were often encouraged to marry young and become homemakers. Higher education and careers were still largely seen as the domain of men, although cracks were beginning to show in this societal norm. 
This pressure to settle down quickly was undoubtedly a driving force behind the dating scene. Couples courted, fell in love, and tied the knot in a whirlwind of post-war passion and optimism. The result was the baby boom, a period from 1946 to 1964 that saw a dramatic increase in birth rates. This period was a significant chapter in the story of dating. It marked a departure from the formal courtship of yesteryears and set the stage for the more relaxed dating norms of the future. Yet it was also a time when societal expectations and traditional gender roles were still deeply ingrained. This period saw a surge in marriages and births, marking a significant milestone in the evolution of dating. The sexual revolution of the 1960s and 70s brought about another dramatic shift in dating culture. The era was marked by a wave of new attitudes towards sex and relationships that swept across the United States, challenging the traditional norms that had long dictated the dynamics of dating. The sexual revolution was more than just a cultural phenomenon. It was a societal response to a host of changes. The advent of birth control, the feminist movement, and changing attitudes towards premarital sex all converged to redefine the rules of the dating game. The result? The rise of casual dating and the decline of the traditional date. In this era, young people began to experiment with casual relationships, exploring their sexual identities outside the confines of committed partnerships. The traditional dinner and a movie date was replaced by group outings, non-exclusive relationships, and other forms of casual encounters. The focus shifted from courtship and marriage to personal freedom and exploration. Yet this shift didn't happen in a vacuum. It was influenced by societal changes and pressures that were reshaping America at the time. The feminist movement, for instance, was challenging gender roles and advocating for women's rights, including sexual freedom. This movement not only empowered women to take control of their own dating lives, but also helped to normalize the idea of women dating casually. The introduction of the birth control pill in the 1960s also played a significant role. It gave women unprecedented control over their reproductive health, which in turn gave them more freedom in their dating choices. The pill was more than a medical breakthrough. It was a social game changer, contributing to the rise of casual dating and the sexual liberation of women. The sexual revolution indeed transformed the landscape of dating, giving rise to the casual dating culture we know today. It was a time of exploration, of pushing boundaries and questioning norms. It was a time when people started to redefine what dating meant to them, setting the stage for the dating culture we see in the present day. The advent of the internet and digital technology in the late 20th and early 21st century brought about a revolution in dating. The days of courting and formal introductions gave way to a world where love could be found at the click of a button or the swipe of a screen. This paradigm shift was driven by several societal changes. The pace of life accelerated, leaving less time for traditional dating methods. More people were moving to cities, creating a sense of anonymity and isolation that made traditional community-based matchmaking methods less effective. And, as societal norms evolved, the pressure to marry and start a family by a certain age lessened, leading many to explore non-traditional dating methods. Enter online dating. What started in the mid-90s with a few niche websites soon exploded into a multi-billion dollar industry. Websites and apps catered to every taste and preference offering an endless pool of potential matches at your fingertips. For some, this was a boon, a way to meet people they might never have crossed paths with otherwise. But as with any revolution, the digital dating era had its drawbacks. The anonymity of the internet created a playground for deception and misrepresentation. People could hide behind carefully curated profiles, leading to disappointment when reality didn't match the online persona. Furthermore, the abundance of choices led to a paradox of choice where too many options resulted in indecision and dissatisfaction. Yet, despite these challenges, online dating has become a staple of the modern dating landscape. It has allowed for connections across geographical boundaries, broken down barriers of race, religion, and social class, and provided a platform for those who might have otherwise struggled to find love. Indeed, the digital revolution has transformed dating in ways we could have never imagined at the dawn of the 20th century.